When it comes to protecting our planet, humanity is up against it. Experts suggest that in order to achieve this on a global basis, we need to limit world temperatures as soon as they increase 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels in order to avoid some of the worst effects of climate change. By 2050, carbon emissions must be eliminated. To do this, a number of approaches will be necessary, but one green tool is rising in favor. Green hydrogen Hydrogen is defined as hydrogen produced only from renewable sources. Green hydrogen has the benefit of being a clean burning chemical. That it can help us to decarbonize a range of sectors that have proved hard to clean up the past this involves long distance transportation as well as the chemical iron and steel industries. Additionally, we can use hydrogen to store renewable electricity and heat our homes. If we aren't serious about decarbonization then it can be wasted. If we are serious about achieving a future without carbon emissions, the only choice is to use hydrogen as a renewable fuel. Since there are many other businesses and downstream goods that continue to pollute but have nothing to do with renewable energy, hygiene may be the answer. Energy can only take you so far, in fact, up to the entire world. Because hydrogen is highly reactive, it cannot exist on its own in nature, it must interact with other elements to form compounds like water. One oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms the only way to obtain hydrogen is to create it. By removing its naturally present constituents, such as water it's a process that uses a lot of energy. Oil is now extracted from fossil fuels. The creation of fossil fuels results in around 843 metric tons of carbon dioxide annually on a global scale, which is comparable to the combined annual CO2 emissions of Indonesia and the United Kingdom. This is why green hydrogen is so desirable but yet highly expensive to produce. And while expenses are decreasing, there are still a lot of difficulties. The fact that hydrogen fuel cells still require a lot of development work to transform hydrogen into useful energy for cars, but there is absence of infrastructure for its transportation and storage nevertheless, expensive remedies to some of these problems are in the works. May drive the market for hydrogen to $2.5 trillion in direct sales by 2050. There are numerous ways to create hydrogen. Experts use colors to categorize the sources and methods by which hydrogen is produced, the vast majority use color. Today, fossil fuels are used to make hydrogen. Gasification is the method used to produce brown hydrogen from coal. Three quarters of all hydrogen produced worldwide is grey hydrogen, which is obtained from natural gas through a process called steam methane. Reforming both of these procedures have the drawback of producing a lot of CO2. Fossil fuels are also used to produce hydrogen. However, includes carbon capture and the use of storage technologies as another electrolysis is a process used to create hydrogen. This is a thing called an electrolyzer. Divides a compound using an electric current into its component parts. The substance in this instance is fresh water. This separates into oxygen and hydrogen. Green hydrogen is produced from the hydrogen that comes before it if the power is generated using renewable energy sources like wind and solar. Today, most hydrogen is used in industry around the world, including the manufacturing of ammonia, methanol, and steel. However, recent improvements in green hydrogen generation and storage, along with the global movement towards sustainability, mean that green hydrogen is now a viable alternative. The first sector to utilize hydrogen was the automotive sector. Because hydrogen is an energy carrier rather than an energy source itself, it has some advantages over electric cars and holds the potential to completely change the way that transportation is done. Using a fuel cell, hydrogen fuel must be converted into electricity. Inside each individual fuel cell, the process goes something like this before it can be utilized to power an automobile. A catalyst reacts with hydrogen taken from an onboard pressurized tank. This catalyst is typically manufactured from pricey platinum. As the hydrogen passes over the catalyst, its electrons are stripped, forcing them to flow along an external circuit and resulting in the generation of an electrical current. The electric motor then uses this current to drive the vehicle. There is simply water vapor as a result. Hydrogen fuel vehicles and electric vehicles have the potential to have a zero carbon footprint compared to conventional cars. Now question is what separates a hydrogen fuel vehicle from a battery electric vehicle? You will travel the ranges in a hydrogen fuel vehicle because it has a much faster refueling time of 5 minutes as opposed to 45 minutes for electric powered vehicle. Additionally, it has about 5 times better energy storage per unit volume and weight, which frees up more space in the car for things like passenger storage and also enables you to travel further. Vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells may be particularly effective, according to experts. 
when it comes to long distance air travel, freight shipping, and other hard to electrify industries like long distance trucking all applications heavily utilize the advantage of hydrogen is that it gets to the point with an 18 wheel truck where utilizing a lithium battery your entire truck would require the usage of a lithium battery. The truck driver doesn't have to constantly recharge it. Vehicle production has lagged around the globe. Global deployment of fuel cell electric vehicles powered by hydrogen could top 13 million by 2030 from current levels of around 16,000 as the market scales up and costs go down. According to the Hydrogen Council, 7.2 million electric vehicles were on the road in contrast. Only three automakers offer passenger hydrogen fuel cell automobiles at the moment. Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai all have starting prices of around $60,000 each. That costs twice as much as some entry-level electric vehicles. Along with Toyota and its truck, Hyundai Hino subsidiary is also developing trucks using hydrogen fuel cells. The world's largest oil and gas company recently made investments in truck and bus startups using hydrogen fuel cells. According to Heisen Motors and Nissan Motors, consumer production of their hydrogen fuel cell vehicle will start in 2023. However, one business is not sure of that the benefits of the fuel cell truck are that Tesla is developing an electric semi-truck that it plans to begin shipping. Despite the fact that fuel cell cars refuel similarly to conventional cars, they cannot use the same stations, which has been a major obstacle to the adoption of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. There are now just 407 hydrogen stations in operation worldwide. They are mainly found in Europe. Asia is next, then North America. There are just over 40 public hydrogen fueling stations in the United States. Two hydrogen refueling stations have been established in India, one each at Indian Oil R&D Center, Faridabad and National Institute of Solar Energy, Gurugram. The existing stations must have been built. We need vehicles that can transport hydrogen to the stations or underground pipelines to transport them in order to establish the refining capability. In addition to the infrastructure, a concern that is regularly raised the inefficiency of hydrogen fuel is a problem. This is due to the fact that 70% of the efficiency of hydrogen fuel is lost by the time it is produced, transported, distributed, and converted to electricity in the fuel cell. The fact that hydrogen is extremely energetically dense, or that it can store a lot of energy in a tiny volume, helps to some extent to overcome this obstacle. The quantity of energy contained in 1 kg of hydrogen is equivalent to 1 gallon of gasoline. When you use the hydrogen to prepare your car, that is when there is a difference. Due to the fact that it is an electrochemical reaction, it is around 2 to 3 times more efficient than burning gasoline. And if you want to know more about hydrogen fuel we already made a video on this, click i button to watch the video. You do need very expensive, incredibly high pressure tanks since hydrogen must be maintained under a great deal of pressure. Fuel cell technology is beginning to advance, and hydrogen storage is becoming a little more accessible, but scaling it up will take some time. Experts are thrilled about the possibility of using it to store renewable energy that would otherwise be lost. People understand that it's actually kind of the perfect approach to temporarily store renewable energy. The hydrogen stored in the salt mines will be used by a power plant after the Intermountain Power Project, which is located in Delta, Utah, and is the last coal-fired power plant supplying power to the state of California, is scheduled to be retired in 2025. This will allow it to be used when the grid needs it rather than when it is produced. Our machinery will be used to repower that power plant, according to Intermountain Power. Utilizing gas turbines, but they want us to build the first heavy-duty gas turbines in the world that can generate this power using a combination of natural gas and hydrogen. The objective is to use entirely green hydrogen and it can be able to generate 150,000 megawatts, hours of energy storage, 150,000 megawatt hours, and 30,840 megawatt power plants are sufficient to meet one-seventh of the peak energy demands. That storage method is more efficient because it can be done for less money, but if you need to store electricity for a long time, battery storage becomes increasingly more expensive. As batteries become more and more complex, hydrogen can be stored underground in substantial salt deposits. Due of its adaptability, hydrogen is the many aspects of our economy, including energy production, industrial storage, and transportation, might be disrupted. Indeed, according to analysts, clean hydrogen might supply up to 22% of our energy demands by 2050, compared to only 4% of the energy that hydrogen currently provides. However, this would necessitate far more renewable electricity generation. According to a survey, producing enough green hydrogen to supply a fourth of our energy requirements would need more electricity than the world now produces and an expenditure of $11 trillion in its creation, storage, and transportation. Analysts claim that our infrastructure is still deficient. 
moving in the right direction, we actually witness a careful analysis of the price of hydrogen generation, which has decreased from two sources, electrolyzer. The cost has decreased by 50%. In addition, the cost of renewable energy has decreased by between 50% and 60% during the past five years. We predict that both of them will decrease by another 60 to 70% before the end of the decade. Hydrogen fuel cells will become more affordable as their use in trucks and other applications expands everything depends on the applications that develop. Many experts agree that these developments cannot take place without some level of government investment and legislation, therefore the main objective is to lower the cost of green hydrogen to the point where it begins to replace some of these fossil fuels. If we are serious about decarbonization, governments have already begun to take action and will become a very important part of our lives. Thanks for watching this video.